Good morning, folks. Today we've got interesting studies to hit on galactic light in the May 2024 solar storm, confirmation of what we've been saying. We'll also check out seismicity and, of course, space weather. We're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, where solar flaring continued in the M-class range, but slightly lower than previous days. There was a filament release off the northern departing limb, and the coronal hole is departing as well. All quiet geomagnetically and in the solar wind. The top watch for eruptive activity remains that northern sunspot group. It is the most complex with a lot of activity going on within its local area, and that is the reason it has been the producer of most of the solar flares for the last three days. While other areas are producing small flare flashes, the biggest and most frequent flaring is occurring up north there, facing Earth directly this week. Speaking of coronal holes, we looked at this two weeks ago. Last one is departing, and the next is set to turn in. We are still under the magnetic influence of the last one as we switch to a magnetic look from above to the north. Next coronal hole system will begin interacting with geospace later this week. Let's go next to seismicity, where the top quake of the day was a 6.2 that struck just offshore El Salvador. Luckily, no reports of major damage or loss of life. We also can see the Ethiopian swarm is continuing at the East African Rift Zone. Still got eyes firmly locked there for more. First up in the articles is this, the discovery of an unidentified excess light source at high galactic latitude. It is a mystery to them as of now, but this should almost certainly be the photo ionization and energetic residual from the galactic current sheet and magnetic field activity. When they see extra light in the galaxy, the solar system, pretty much anywhere, the answer is usually dusty plasma and electromagnetism. Lastly today, folks, we have an interesting look at the May 2024 solar storm and we'll get confirmation of two separate claims we've made. First, the ability of these storms to impact the entire atmosphere and the ground, including the triggering of earthquakes, confirmed and solidified in its mechanistic action. There were already dozens of studies showing the solar earthquake connection. May the doubt rest in peace. But perhaps more practically important for all of us, they confirmed that what hit us in May was orders of magnitude smaller than what hit in 1859, the Carrington event. The problem is that the auroras from May matched and in some locations exceeded the 1859 event. Well, how could that be possible if it was orders of magnitude smaller? As we keep saying, over and over, more and more Earth effects will be seen from less and less space weather as Earth's protective magnetic field continues to weaken in the ongoing pole shift. Folks, the mini-conference schedule for the pole shift days at Observer Ranch is right there in yellow. We also have a special meetup day on the 21st and, of course, August Dunning coming May 3rd and 4th for the big two-day event. More announcements coming. Come see us, ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.